Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In the headlines this week, there's the rediscovery of an echidna species that was lost for 60 years, a new species of fossil dolphin with tusk-like teeth, an unusual prehistoric North American primate, and much more. Starting off the news this week, we take a look at a rather exciting secret buried deep in the Earth. Around four and a half billion years ago, a protoplanet we called Thea collided with a baby Earth in a cataclysmic event that is believed to be the origin of the Moon. As material from our shattered planet came into orbit and the larger pieces began to form a larger body. Now fast forward to the 1980s and scientists looking deep past the crust of our planet discover two massive bodies of material in the lowermost mantle, different to the material around it. One of these bodies resides under the continent of Africa and the other deep Deep under the Pacific Ocean. A new study published this week has suggested that these two continent-sized anomalies are actually remnants from Thea, the small protoplanet that smashed into Earth billions of years ago. The study then goes on to look at what effect this may have had on Earth's early evolution. As it was previously believed that remnants of Thea would simply join to Earth's own makeup over billions of years, subsequently becoming indistinguishable from Earth's material, this new outlook could have big consequences for how we see our planet's evolution. In addition to this, it could change how we see the evolution of planetary bodies in general. Collisions such as the one that happened to Earth are believed to be fairly common early on in a planet's life. It could be that the other planets around our own solar system and others around the universe are much more of a mashup of different bodies than we previously thought. And in other news, we'll just quickly mention the possible launch of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy Launcher is currently on schedule for a launch this Friday, with Saturday and Sunday being backup days if needed. So tune in for what could be a very exciting step forward. Also in the news for this week is the very exciting announcement that an echidna species not encountered by scientists since 1961 has been rediscovered. Attenborough's long-beaked echidna was only known from a single damaged specimen kept in a natural history museum in the Netherlands, which was only recognised as a new species in 1998 when it was x-rayed by researchers and then named after Sir David Attenborough. This single specimen has been collected in the Cyclops Mountains in Indonesian New Guinea and remains the only direct evidence of the species' existence until now. Many had thought that the echidna may already be extinct, but fortunately a team of biologists have now recorded trail cam footage of living members of the species. This research team not only discovered new species of beetles, spiders and shrimps during their four-week expedition in the Cyclops Mountains, but after checking the very last memory card on the very last camera that they collected, they discovered that they had confirmed the survival of this enigmatic mammal species. Some fantastic news that highlights the importance of the concept conservation of the Cyclops mountain region, an area that's home to many special animals, and hopefully we'll be seeing much more footage of Attenborough's echidna in the future. In less exciting news, a study published this week has shown how Greenland's glaciers are rapidly retreating due to climate change. The glaciers in question are Greenland's peripheral glaciers and ice caps that are distinct from the Greenland ice sheet and are land terminating. They only constitute around 4% of Greenland's total glaciated area, but are contributing to 14% of Greenland's current ice loss. Thousands of aerial photos of Greenland's coastline dating back to the 1930s were taken by Danish pilots, mostly because of military operations. These photos were digitised and then combined with satellite images of Greenland today to measure how much the landscape has changed over a much longer time scale than previously thought possible with just satellite data. Alarmingly, they have shown that the rate of glacial retreat during the 21st century has been twice as fast as the retreat in the 20th century. Over the past several decades, studies have shown that the Arctic has warmed four times faster than the rest of the world. These images, compared to the images you can see today, really do highlight the problem our world's icy environments are facing due to climate change. First up in the paleontology news this week, there's been a study looking at different diets of mosasaurs that coexisted at the very end of the Cretaceous period, 68 to 66 million years ago. 
The mosasaurs that the paleontologists examined come from rock formations found in the Netherlands and Belgium, and five different species of these aquatic reptiles are known to have existed here. These different species have been suggested to have fed on different types of prey, meaning they would avoid competing with each other for the same food sources a concept known as niche partitioning. Previous studies on mosasaur diets have looked at the anatomy of their teeth, the biomechanics of their feeding, the orbit size to determine their range of visual foraging, as well as other lines of evidence in order to determine what different species might have been eating. This new study, however, takes a different approach, using three-dimensional dental microware texture analysis, essentially looking at the structure of the tiny scratches found across the surfaces of the teeth, to reconstruct what sorts of food items they may have been processing. As it turns out, this analysis shows the mosasaurs from these formations couldn't be placed into strict, neatly defined separate diets. Instead, there were three broad groupings that overlapped a good deal. The mosasaurs Carinodens and Plioplaticarpus were found to place in the first group, favouring fish and harder invertebrate prey, while the species Prognathodon saturator and Prognathodon sectorius place in the second group, showing preference towards softer invertebrate prey. Mosasaurus hoffmanni, meanwhile, falls into a third group, which seems to have been quite generalist, overlapping a lot with all the different preferred prey groups. The first two groups were also quite generalist as well, but there was still a clear distinction between the preference for harder or softer prey items. So it seems that these mosasaurs may actually have faced higher levels of competition from one another than previously realised. And this study helps to better resolve the structure of these latest Cretaceous marine ecosystems, as well as showing the usefulness of this 3D microware analysis. Also in the paleontology news for this week is the very exciting naming and description of a new species of prehistoric dolphin with tusk-like teeth. Called Neoroa Raymaea, it comes from rocks in New Zealand dating to the end of the Oligocene Epoch, about 25 to 23 million years ago. The genus name comes from the Maui language and roughly translates as long teeth, while the species name means emerging tusk, very nicely describing the most striking features of this dolphin. The material known for this species comprises an almost complete skull, only missing a few bones. Neoroa had a very elongate grey style snout with several projecting tusk-like teeth at the tip and smaller cheek teeth further back, which were found loose from the skull. The function of these tusk-like teeth is suggested to be in slashing and stunning prey, though there's also a possibility that the teeth had less of a role in a feeding and were instead a sexually dimorphic display feature, perhaps being present only in males, at least more exaggerated in them. However, considering that only a single skull has been found, this is impossible to test at the moment. Neoroa is found to be closely related to other prehistoric dolphins also found in New Zealand, and is a member of a group of extinct toothed whales called Wipatiids. Neoroa is particularly closely related to another genus, Neohahe, which was named in June of this year and also has an elongated rustrum with protruding teeth thought to be used for slashing at prey. Numerous differences in the skulls of these animals show that they are different species, however, and so the description of Neoroa adds to the known diversity of toothed whales with tusk-like teeth, as well as showing how important the fossil record of New Zealand is to our understanding of these mammals. And finally for the recent paleontology news, there's been a very interesting paper describing new fossils of an unusual North American primate that may have solved a mystery that's confused scientists since the 1960s. First described in 1963, this primate dates to the early Oligocene epoch, around 30 million years ago, and is named Igamu Wishlashala, meaning little cat man in the Sioux language. Fossils of this primate were first found in South Dakota, then in the 80s and 90s more fossils were found in Oregon. This little primate is quite significant as it lived at a strange time, suddenly appearing in the fossil record after all other North American primates went extinct some 4 million years prior. The relationships of this primate to other prehistoric lineages have therefore been a mystery to paleontologists for decades as it seems to have appeared out of nowhere and it's also known from pretty limited remains. This new study may have finally resolved this mystery though. The researchers report that the discovery of even older fossils of Igamu Wishlashaha from Nebraska, in addition to describing a relative of this species that was found in China, which they named Paleohodites naduensis. Analyzing the fossils of the North American 
species and this new Chinese primate, they found that they are very closely related to each other, indicating that the American species was not a survivor from the North American primate lineage that somehow managed to survive the climatic changes that wiped out the others, but instead represents a lineage that came over from Asia across the Bering Land Bridge. So a fantastic new study that helps solve a 60-year-old paleontological mystery. That's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Niho roa me. Niho roa me. Niho roa me. Niho Is it ia or ea? Reimaia. Reimaia. I think it's Reimaia. Yeah. Rayma Aya. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've got to keep this in. Oh. All three. All three. <laughs> Niho Roa Maya. Rayma Aya. <laughs> Niho Roa Raymaya. Niho Roa Raymaya. As soon as I see it, that is going to leave my head. <laughs> this is worse. Igamu Weechla Sahala. No. We chla sha la. Chla sha la. I don't know which word. I think it's just. Oh my god. At least there is a pronunciation guide though. Igamu we chla sha ha. Sha la. And it is named Igamu i chla sha. Igamu we chla sha la. We chla sha la. We chla sha la.